They are in our clothes, they're on our nonstick pans, even on food packaging. They're so-called forever chemicals, and they might be harmful to our health. Now the NBC10 investigators have found they are a growing threat to the water some of us drink and use every day. Investigative reporter Danny Freeman shows us what happened when one Pennsylvania borough found out its water is contaminated. From drinking to cooking Red those hands. to washing up, Sarah Yost's family uses water for pretty much everything. And we only drink the city water. So when Sarah got a letter saying the borough of Emmaus's water was contaminated with something called PFAS, Did it work? she was worried. I'm scared of the water in your, in your own home. What else can we do? But we learned she wasn't the only one in uncharted waters. Well, our immediate reaction was, you know, what do we do? Shane Pepe is the borough manager of Emmaus. In October, the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection told him two of the borough's four main wells showed elevated levels of certain PFAS chemicals. Subsequent tests showed one well had almost double the federal health advisory limit for PFAS. The second well had 10 times the limit. It's alarming. It's scary. Uh, it's certainly not acceptable that it's in our water system. But what are PFAS? Well, they're chemicals used to make common heat resistant or nonstick products. They're known as forever chemicals because they don't break down easily in the environment or in our bodies. Stephanie Wine is a clean water activist with Penn Environment. Now the science is pretty clear that they're a threat to our hormones, that they're a threat um, in terms of cancer risk. Pepe says the PFAS in Emmaus likely came from firefighter foam seeping into the ground. Firefighter foam known to contain forever chemicals. And a fire training center is just steps away from one of the wells. They've been using this foam here for decades. But the timeline from when the borough knew about the contamination to when they shared that information has some residents concerned. The borough got the test results in late October. Then they posted about the PFAS contamination online about a month later. But then they sent a letter out to the community just before Christmas. But when it comes to the notice, Pepe says he was just following the state's instructions. That was all through Pennsylvania DEP. Emails show DEP provided a template and even edited language in the notification before the final version was sent out. We informed them as soon as we possibly could and as soon as we had approval to inform them. So the state shouldn't be creating any delays between a water authority finding out there's an unsafe level of a contaminant and us knowing what's coming out of our tap. Another point raising residents' eyebrows, the borough decided to shut down the most contaminated well, this one right here, immediately. But it's keeping this contaminated well open to keep water flowing to residents, saying there's no immediate risk. Pepe says at least one well must stay open to provide water to the community. As far as the information, in, in, including uh, and definitely not limited to, uh, the idea that you can keep drinking your water, that was all through Pennsylvania DEP. So Emmaus is a, is, is, a, is a specific case. Lisa Daniels is the director of the DEP's Bureau of Safe Drinking Water. She told us the notification time frame is standard for PFAS and health risks may develop over years. Though there seemed to be a lack of communication about Emmaus's still open well. Should that well be operational? So we can certainly check with our district staff, but I'm not aware of Emmaus continuing to use wells that exceed EPA's health advisory. Daniels may not have been aware, but after that interview, we obtained emails showing her DEP staff was well aware one of the contaminated wells would stay open. Daniels did tell us while the state recommends a water source be shut down, that can't always happen. If they can do so safely without that water and still operate their system. To be honest with you, I think Pennsylvania DEP is learning as much as I am right now. All right, so Emmaus had to then purchase a $400,000 filtration system to get rid of the PFAS in its water. But that system may take up to nine months to arrive. The borough says it's considering now legal action against firefighter foam manufacturers to recoup some of those costs. Well, we reached out to the companies Emmaus says contributed to the contamination. They either said no comment, they don't use PFAS in their products, or didn't respond to our request. Jim. I know you've been working hard on this, so what's next in this investigation, Danny? Yeah, so Jim, this is actually a four-part series. We're going to pick this up tomorrow at NBC10 News at 4. This issue is much bigger than just Emmaus, so we're going to be talking to other states to find out what they're doing to try and wrestle with PFAS contamination. And we've seen this in other communities in our viewing area, too. Yes, indeed. And we're going to see uh, exactly how those communities are trying to handle it as well. Danny Freeman, thanks. Jacqueline.